All right, welcome in. Y'all hit the like, y'all share. Give me some excitement and happiness tonight. That'd be great. Um, oh, yeah, John Marston. I don't really feel great about that either. I don't know how you can feel great about that. You just got destroyed in your SEC opener. Uh, you let a freshman who had two and two-thirds innings come in and just carve you up for five and two-thirds innings. There's really no reason to feel great about that. It wasn't good. There wasn't much good about that. Um, we'll go through it, but I mean, just off the surface, they didn't really do anything well tonight. The third inning was fantastic. Uh, Luke Coleman wasn't his sharpest, but we're not going to put it all on him. The defense let him down time and time again tonight. Uh, LSU from a staff standpoint, I mean, coaching staff standpoint, clearly came into this game wanting to throw nothing but breaking ball and whatever they saw to make them want to do that, they were wrong. It didn't work. For a couple of reasons. Number one, you didn't have the command you needed of it. And number two, State hit it. Um, Mississippi State did not look like a struggling offense tonight. That's a team that came in hitting just a notch above 280, and they pounded out 15 hits on you and pushed across 10 runs with relative ease, if we're being quite honest. Um, I'm not going to sit here and just hose LSU's pitching staff. They're still a very good unit, and they will they will bounce back. Um, but... What happened, everything else, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, man. What I'm the most disappointed in, you know, thank you, Joseph Lee, excuse me, 16 hits. They pounded out 16 hits. Yeah, I don't want to short the Bulldogs a freaking hit. Um, the thing I'm most disappointed in is the defense. That might sound strange, but that is ultimately what helped give State so much momentum tonight. And it's just really, really, really disappointing. So... I mean, you, you look at the, was it the, um, was it the bottom half of the, the bottom half of the third inning when you had the, the Taylor made double play ball and Braswell fired it past Jared Jones. Uh, that run ultimately comes around a score, makes it a, a, a two run game. And then it would have been in the fifth inning, I believe the fifth inning. Uh, when did the inning that Hines hit his first home run, just a bullet, which, God, if you didn't just see that crap coming from him this weekend, kids struggling mightily. You knew – we talked about it in the preview. You knew he was going to break out eventually. You just hoped it wasn't going to be against you. Bad news, it's against you. His slump is officially over. Facing him the rest of the weekend is going to be a, a chore, especially with Dakota Jordan in front of him. So um, the top of that order is formidable. Um, anyway, was it, the, was it the fifth or the sixth? I can't uh, – I can't remember. I don't know. You had the – Hines let off with the homer. That tied the ball game. You end up getting to two outs and a runner at first base, and uh, you, you have a ground ball or a line drive into left field, and it goes under Bingham's glove and allows a run to score. That gives them uh, that gives them the lead at 4-3, to three, and then it extends the inning. I mean, Holman, y'all, Holman wasn't sharp tonight by any stretch of the imagination. He, he wasn't. But he battled hard, and his defense technically cost him three runs tonight. I mean, that, that's a – when you look at the, the final score of the game, it looks inconsequential because you lost by seven runs or six runs. Forgot your little, you know, rinky-dink run in the top of the ninth inning. But in the grand scheme of the game, when you actually look at it, frame by frame, inning by inning, that mattered a whole lot. Um, Gidry after Holman wasn't something I was really expecting. I, I get it in the sense that he's your best arm and it's a high leverage spot, so you're going to put him out there for that. But it's you know it's it's similar to what you were doing with, with Luke Holman. It's going to be a lot of slider. And, I mean, the fastball from, from Guidry isn't, you know, I mean, it's 88 to 89. So if he doesn't have the slider, look out. He could get hard, uh, get hit hard. Um, but what I will do is I'll tip my hat to Nolan Steven. Nolan Stevens, he was awesome. Um, I mean, the kid had his longest outing was two and two-thirds. We didn't even go over him in the preview because – he, I mean, there, there weren't many meaningful innings from him. There were five appearances, but there weren't many meaningful innings. And a, a freshman comes in in that spot, just hurling 95 from the left side with a wipeout slider. And 
he carved up LSU. I mean, he he really did. I, that that I will I will absolutely tip my hat to that young man. He was awesome, um, and that's going to happen from time to time. But what's what's of greater consequence to me is the the errors were massive. LSU with runners in scoring position tonight was not good. Uh, I think they were. I guess they will know because the run scored on an RBI ground out in the ninth, so they were over. LSU was over tonight with runners in scoring position. You didn't have the two out magic that you had. State did. State had plenty of two out magic. That that honestly looked like LSU um, early in the season. So, uh, you know, I we'll see what what happens. I, I thought. I mean, obviously, I thought the top half of the third inning was great offensively, and man. You had to have so much hope at that point, too, because you know, you know what I thought to myself? You know what that reminded me? It reminded me of last year. They give up that run. Holman makes a huge pitch to get out of the bottom of the second, and then you uh, you go right there and immediately answer back, and it's like, all right, here we go. But then I mean, we went through it already. The defense let you down in the bottom half. It pushed a run across to you know give them momentum back. And, and once State got the momentum tonight, they never let it go again. You just you couldn't get – the momentum back in your dugout to to save your to save the life uh, to save your life. Um, just not a great not a great night. Uh, I felt like the uh, Cloud Zach felt like the game turned on the cling AB when they brought the lefty in. Uh yeah, uh, to an extent, yeah. I mean, you you had a great opportunity to extend the lead there. You had uh, let's see what first and second, nobody out off two walks in the top half of uh, of the fourth and. Kling popped up on the first pitch, and yeah, I mean that. that and from then on, Stevens settled in. And they, look, and again, he was awesome. Like we we will give Nolan Stevens his flowers. He was great. I thought LSU did well offensively, honestly, against Evan Sierra. They got the pitch count up. They hung a three spot on him and were patient in that top of the fourth inning to draw those two walks. That that was great. Um, it just it you know they you you. Faced a really tough lefty out of the bullpen. You've struggled early in the season offensively with consistency. He exploited that because he was awesome and had his stuff. What you didn't do that you had been doing is you didn't continue to pitch and play defense well to keep yourself in the ball game, And that's where it got away from you. So I'm going to be honest. I'd rather talk about the rest of the series while we have a few more minutes. I don't really want to talk about tonight anymore because there's not really much more I can say. They didn't play well and they got they got blown out because of it. Um, you hope you play better tomorrow. The good news is you have a great pitcher on the mound engaged jump who's been awesome all season long. Uh, and you need him to come out and pick your Friday guy up. This is what we talk about. This is where we're really going to see the type of rotation that LSU has. We all think they have a very good one. And for good reason, we think that this is where we're really going to find out how good and how deep they are on the mound starting pitching wise, because when you have a Friday guy who struggles a little bit and you you have some issues and you lose that game, can your number two come stop the bleeding, be a stopgap, and pick up pick up the team and get you a win and even the series up, and then you feel good, you know, with a veteran who's pitched on the biggest stage in college baseball as your Sunday guy. Uh, it won't be super clean, but you know he's going to battle hard. So you need Gage Jump to really go out there and shove. You also need LSU to start fast offensively tomorrow. It would do wonders for them to put up a couple runs in the top half of the, of the first inning against Cal Steven and really try to take what I expect to be a raucous and massive crowd at Duty Noble tomorrow. Weather's supposed to be great. They won tonight. Like That place should be packed and rocking. I know they're still on spring break, but uh, the adults that live there aren't on spring break. So... That should be an, an incredible crowd and atmosphere tomorrow. You just hope that you hope that you go. Uh, I've seen a lot of questions about Paxton Clean. Y'all expect him to be in there tomorrow. I'm sorry. I know that's not what anybody wants to hear. Plenty of people tweeted tonight like the, the Paxton Clean uh, experiment is over. It's not. It's not. Because the kid was a first-round pick out of high school. You got him to campus. They're going to stick with him. They just are. If anything, it'll be a game where he sits to try and watch it, and then they're going to put him right back in there. They're going to stick with Paxton Clean. So we just have to, you know, watch him go through. I'll say this. I thought Josh Pearson had a nice night at the plate. He ended up with the two RBIs, the homer. Um, I He might have struck out once, but he put the ball in play every other time. Uh, 
you know, even right there at the end of the game in the ninth inning, I know I called it a rinky dink run early. I was frustrated. At the <laughs> at the end of the game there, even then, when you're down, you know, seven runs, he's not trying to do too much. He's just trying to score the run in that situation, and he did. That's a mature approach, shows the trust. I think you get why he was in there tonight. So uh loved that. Um so Pearson played well. I like seeing Tommy go yard. It feels like he's about to break out. That could be the, the sign for it. They just uh they need to go. I mean, there were some positives early in that game. That that's why, like offensively, there were positives early in the game. That's why I'm willing to just tip my hat so much to Nolan Stevens. Because I thought LSU did well early offensively. It just got out of hand and away from them uh when Stevens was in there and you just you didn't pitch well enough or play defense. Um uh tonight so you got another game tomorrow you win two out of three that's the goal win two out of three hey the pelicans won that's great they needed that one uh you win two out of three that's what you want to do and you've got great arms left so that's what we're gonna go do y'all do me a solid smash the like one more time uh share it out greatly appreciate it we'll have another live stream Tomorrow after the game, hopefully LSU's evened up the series, and we're looking forward to a rubber match on Sunday. For now, that's going to wrap it up for tonight, and uh, we'll talk again tomorrow on Moose at the Box.